Okay, so now that you've seen some of the awesome things that the Google Chrome browser can do, I'm gonna take you the next step deeper and we're gonna really get into what I think is the best part of it and that is signing into the browser. You do not need to sign into the browser every day provided you are using the same computer. You only need to sign in once and I'm going to talk about all the benefits that there are there to signing in. So let's just get right into it. So if you go over here to the top right, you will see these three dots right here and if you click on them and then we go down to settings, you will access the Chrome settings. So first off, what you wanna do is on the top where it says sign in, you're gonna to want to sign in with your Google account. Um, this will allow the Chrome browser to save various settings and we're gonna be able to pick what um, bookmarks you have, what pages automatically open up, you can choose to save passwords if you want, all different things. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and sign in. Now the next thing is on startup. So that means when you first start up the Chrome browser, what do you want to happen? So you can have it open a new tab page, which is what you saw in the beginning. You can have it continue where you left off where it will reopen any browsers that were open be right before you closed it. Or you can have it open a specific page or pages. So I'm just gonna click on that so you can see what that looks like. And so you could say when it first starts up, I want it to go to Bing, I want it to go to Google, I want it to go to, I don't know, Facebook. Whatever you want it to do, you can have as many pages as you want. What I do on my um, school computer is I have it open up my school email. I have it open up my school grading and attendance program. I have it open up um, my lesson planner, which happens to be electronic. So those are things I know I'm gonna use um, immediately and throughout the day. So I have those things automatically open up. Another option, instead of typing them all in, because you might not know the exact address, is if you open up each of those pages in various tabs, you can just click Use Current Pages and any of the pages that are opened up in tabs will turn into these startup pages. So I'm just gonna click Cancel because I don't need those. Uh, I do wanna make a slight note here. If you are doing this on a Chromebook, some of the choices will be slightly different but for the most part, you will see things the same. So themes, so you can get themes. So you may have noticed I have this kind of blue, this Forza Azzurri Italian flag theme happening here. You can choose by doing get themes, it'll open up the Chrome Web Store and bring you to a list of all of the various themes that are there and so you can just, you can search for specific ones, you can scroll through and see, you know, there's hundreds if not thousands of different themes that you can go through. So if you're like, oh, I like cats, it shows you eight, but then you can click view all and you'll get all of the various cat themes that people have made. And once you want it, you just click on it and then you click add to Chrome, which I'm not gonna do right now because I don't wanna change my theme, but then it will um, show that as your theme. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that now. Show the home button means this little button right here. So you can see there's the home button, I'm gonna take it away. Bye bye home button. Basically, whatever you set as your home button, um, you can have it be a website that you always go back to, like maybe it's your school website or something. You can put that there so that you can easily go back to your home page at any time. There's also the bookmarks bar, which right here shows up with any bookmarks. So you can have it always showing or just showing um, when you have bookmarks there. We're going to get into that in a little bit. So if you remember from the last video, we talked about how you can search directly from the Omnibox. So if you have a preferred search engine, you can do that. It gives you Google, Yahoo, Bing, Ask, AOL as some of the 
search engines and then when you click on manage search engines it brings you to a whole bunch of different search engines that you can choose and then it has other search engines um, that come so like it'll consider Amazon a search engine because you can search from there um, all these other things you can uh, change what you want to make as default and you can get rid of things by xing things out that you might not want people this is where the good stuff comes in I'm gonna hold off on that for a second because I want that to be um, a separate video and I'm gonna scroll down and click on show advanced settings so this is what allows you to set some privacy settings so let's say um, you can use a predict I'm gonna click use the prediction service so that it loads pages more quickly and it kind of predicts what's gonna be on that page to quickly load it and then fixes it if it made a mistake I mean and you hardly notice it um, automatically send security incidents to Google so they can do that I mean there's all these different things you can choose the ones you want then you have the option to enable autofill so basically this means like have you ever seen it where you start typing in your name and then it's you know gives you the option to fill it in with the rest of your information if you want to do that you can check this box and then you at any time you can manage your autofill set um, things so if there's something that's showing up that's not correct you can double click on it and edit it you can also add in new autofills if you want you can also have it save credit cards especially those that you might be using with um, Google payments or Google wallet it will save those as well if you would like them to passwords this is one of the things that I like about this is that you can save your passwords in which you know a lot of browsers do that and then when you click manage passwords it shows you all the different passwords and if you scroll over to the um, where the password is you can click on it and then you can click this show button and then I'll actually show you the password because have you ever saved the password in and then you need to use it someplace else and you're like, oh, I don't remember what the password is because it's saved in here. Well, now you can do that. And the beauty of this is when you click on show, it will ask you for your Google account or your computer's password because it just to show that you're actually you and it's not just showing the password to any random person who happens to be on your computer. And now <clears throat> the beauty of signing into Google is that if I go to another computer let's say you know I have this on my school computer and then I go to my home computer and I sign in with that same Google account any autofills will automatically transfer over any passwords that I've saved will automatically transfer over the new tabs that I want to open will automatically transfer over it's practically like having your computer again other things you can do is you can choose the font size you can customize fonts and how well it's going to zoom um, I would not really worry about the network because especially if you're using a school computer you don't want to mess up anything that um, will prevent your computer from accessing the network you can talk about various languages so a lot of times Google will offer to translate a page for you if it's not in the language that you um, have set so under so right now I have it set for English as my languages I can add in another language if I want so then tell it that I understand this other language so let's say you know I'm gonna tell it to put in Italian and I can um, do that so now it can translate a page into Italian for me if I wanted to the downloads so you probably have a downloads folder on your computer and this is where automatically any downloads are going to be stored but you can change that and you can also set it to um, ask before it saves each thing so that before you save any file you can tell it where you want to save it 
Google Cloud Print, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on that, but um, this is a way to um, remotely print to other printers. If you do need information on that, just let me know and I can um, go into that further. And then lastly, if you needed to at any point kind of just back off of any of these settings, you can just press reset settings and it'll bring it back to, it'll log you out, clear out any settings you have, and bring you back to what it is for just a basic person who has never signed into Google.